God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We are Abundant Grace Church. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria, and I'm the pastor of the church. Thank you for joining us today, for truly this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall all rejoice and be glad in it. It's a beautiful day out, a little bit on the cool side. The sun is shining, and we can look at the marvelous creation of God through our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for bringing us together once again this week. We thank you for allowing us to have another day in which to live, a day in which to praise you and give you honor and glory. And Lord, another day for which those that are lost will have the opportunity to repent and to receive your grace, which comes through your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father God, for the privilege of serving you. Now, through your Holy Spirit, Father God, move and touch the hearts of all those that are viewing this video or listening to the audio portion. Thank you, Father, as we pray in the name of our divine Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, to whom be glory, power, and majesty, now and forever. Amen. Today, we will be covering part two of our message series titled, Now, simply N-O-W. Our main scripture will be from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, which reads as follows, firstly, from the King James Version. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I succored thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now the Good News Bible renders it. Hear what God says. When the time came for me to show you favor, I heard you. When the day arrived for me to save you, I helped you. Listen. This is the hour to receive God's favor. Today is the day to be saved. My beloved, and today is your day to be saved. If you have never received Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, today is your day to be saved. As we look at our verse today, we can see that Paul is setting an urgency before all of us. All of us that are listening to this message. All of those through the century that have read this scripture. A very important thought that should not leave your mind without speaking about it is times and seasons. And being as we are here, we are living in times and seasons. Namely, that now, now and just now, this present fleeting moment, the second that is being recorded by the movement of the second hand, is the only time which you have to work with. Each tick of the clock is the time to repent. Each tick of the clock, you will never get back again. It is in eternity past. My beloved, I myself 
can do nothing with the days that are past. I can do nothing with the days future yet. I reach out towards them, but I cannot improve them. Which means I only have the time that God gives me. I cannot increase my days above the plan of God, the time that he has set for me to live, for me to die and lead this life. I cannot overrule him. He is supreme and in full control of my every breath, every second that I live, every day, every week, every month, every year. He is in full control and I have to respect the time that he gives me and give him the honor that he deserves with my every breath, with, with every second that he gives me. He is due all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. My beloved, the past and the future are areas far behind the reach of our cultivation. We as humans cannot turn the soil or sow the future, nor can we prune and correct the past. For all practical purposes, the only time we as humans have is that which is now passing. The now time. That's all we have. Right now is all I have. Right now is all that you have. So what are you going to do with the time, with the now time that you have? Let's go quickly to 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 10, which says from the Good News Bible, So then, my friends, try even harder to make God's call and His choice of you a permanent experience. If you do so, you will never abandon your faith. I know there have been many that have lost their faith. They have given up on the church. My beloved, there is a difference in giving up in the church as a unit and giving up on God. God is perfect. The church is imperfect. With God, there is all truth. With humans and congregations, churches made up of humans, there can be falsehood, there can be deceit, there can be lies, there can be heartache, headache, lovelessness. But with God, everything is perfect. No evil exists with God. No sorrow exists with God. No hatred exists with God. For God is love. The time present is the only time that we as humans may ever have. Before any future shall become present, we may be merged into eternity. You never know when you are going to leave this present life. As far as I myself know, this day just may be the end of my life's career. And when the sun sets in the west, I may fall to sleep and wake up in eternity. But I know where my future is. I know where I will spend eternity. Because I know who my Savior is. My Savior is Jesus Christ. So therefore I will be with Him in eternity. With 
all the other saints that professed and accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I beloved, if God allows me more days to live, it will never come to me in any other disguise than as time present. We are always in the present. We can never be in the past and can't be in the future in this life. But when we die, we will be in eternity, which has no end. My beloved, for practical purposes, many things that we speculate about concerning the past or the future, the present moment is the only time we have, may have, or ever can have. And it becomes important that all of our thoughts should be centered upon it. If we would make our calling and election sure, which is a permanent thing. I beloved, there is a time that people are allotted to turn from their wicked ways and to be purified through Jesus Christ. But unfortunately, many will not seize that opportunity. That opportunity isn't in the past and it's not in the future because First comes death, then the judgment. The way you die is the way you are judged. The state of your soul when you die is carried over into eternity and you cannot change it. You cannot repent in eternity. Now is the day of salvation. Now is the day to repent. Won't you think about that? as I continue to preach this message. Now let's get back to our main verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. In our scripture today, the Apostle Paul quotes Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 8, which says, Thus saith the Lord, In an accepted time have I heard thee, and in a day of salvation have I helped thee, and I will preserve thee, and give thee a covenant of the people to establish the earth, to cause to inherit the desolate heritages. My beloved, in this passage, the Lord is speaking to the Messiah, speaking to our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is eternal. Jesus Christ is the Word of God. Jesus Christ is God. God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The first part of this verse is a quotation from Isaiah. The second part of the verse is Paul's commentary upon the passage. Behold, now is the accepted time. Paul takes his text from the Old Testament, but he gives us a New Testament sermon upon it. He builds upon the scripture. So, let us try, if we can, to catch the Apostle's meaning of what he is saying. The Apostle Paul refers from this that inasmuch as God has accepted Christ, the representative of his people, he has thereby ushered in an era of acceptance. For God so loved the world, you know John 3, 16, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Jesus came to redeem sinful man back to God. Man fell in the garden, and that falling is cast upon everyone that is born into this life. Acceptance given to the Savior is in Paul's view. He bases his thoughts and his writings on Jesus Christ. 
and their acceptance. The people's acceptance. The sinner's acceptance to accept him as their Messiah, as their Savior. Jesus did not pray for himself, but for us. There is therefore an accepted time for us begun and commenced from the day when Christ went upon the cross and spread his hands and said, Father, into thy hands do I commit my spirit. And he gave up the spirit and died for the sins of all mankind. Which means salvation is there waiting. But you must grab hold of it. And in order to have that salvation, you must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior of all mankind. And that only through him can you go to heaven. You must have remorse. You must be sorry for your sins. You must repent and accept Jesus Christ as the gift of grace from God for your salvation in order to go to heaven. So Jesus stretched out his hands and bowed his head in death and said, It is finished. You can read that in John chapter 19 and verse 30. If Jesus had not been heard by the Father and accepted, an accepted time could never have come to us. Remember, we are but poor and wandering sinners. But since Jesus, who is man's representative, has obtained favor in the eyes of God and through his complete work has forever settled that favor upon himself. It is only through him that you can be saved. Mm -hmm. You can't be saved through a church. You can't be saved through infant baptism. You must come to the cross of Jesus Christ. There is favor in the heart of God to those who Christ represented, even to those transgressors for whom he continually makes intercession. When you repent through Jesus Christ, you receive the favor of God. And that is the only way that you can receive God's favor. It comes no other way. Not through a preacher. Not through a church organization. Not through a religion. Not through a denomination. You must approach the foot of the cross. Cry out to God to forgive you. Repent of your sins and confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. And only when you do that can you have eternal life. You cannot sign the church roll and expect to get to heaven. You cannot claim to belong to a certain denomination and go to heaven. You cannot claim to be an evangelical, a Protestant, a Catholic, a Baptist, a Church of Christ, a Methodist Church member. You cannot get into heaven through them. The only way to the Father is through the Son, Jesus Christ. Period. Don't think because you were baptized when you were an infant, that you're going to get into heaven. It will not happen. Read and study the word of God. It will not happen. If you're Jewish, you must come through Jesus Christ. 
If you're a Gentile, you must come through Jesus Christ. He is the only way to heaven. You can't join another religion and think you're going to get to heaven. It will not happen. Read the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Meditate on the Word of God. Pray and fast and ask God to reveal the truth to you. And He will. Enter His gates with thanksgiving and praise. God will speak to those that come to Him for mercy. God will give you peace when you come to Him through Jesus Christ. There are many religions claiming they are the way. They are not the way. The only way is through Jesus Christ. And the way to Him is through that narrow gate. Go down that straight path that leads to life eternal. You can't work your way there. You can't give your way there. You can't pray your way there. You can only repent your way there and accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. So in closing, my beloved, now is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time. The question is, do you believe it? Your answer will be an either yes or a no. It'll be either yes or no. There is no other answer. You are either going to accept Christ, you're either going to accept this message today and what was said, or you are not. You can't go down the middle and say, well, maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, I'll think about it later. Remember, you are in the now time. Tomorrow you may be in eternity without the opportunity to repent and turn from your sinfulness. And God is making a way for you today in this now time to repent and to secure your place in heaven. And if you want to do that today, let me lead you in a prayer. Remember, it's just God saying in the old prayer. You must mean it. You must have sorrow for your sinfulness. You must turn from your sins and turn to Jesus Christ. You must believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior, that He is the only way. That He was crucified, died, buried, rose again from the dead on the third day and ascended into heaven and is now sitting at the right hand of God the Father in a place of power and majesty from where He shall come to judge the dead and the living. If you want to believe that today, I want to lead you in a prayer. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name, I heard the message today. Now, now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. It has touched my heart. I know that if I should die today, that I will go into eternity without hope and into the lake of fire. I don't want to go there. Therefore, I am repenting today and accepting your plan of salvation which comes through your Son, our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for my sins. 
I ask you to forgive me of my sins and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Savior and the only way to heaven, the only way to eternal happiness, the only way to you, Father God. I believe he was crucified on the cross for my sins. He died, was buried, and rose from the dead on the third day. I believe that today. I believe that he send, ascended into heaven. He ascended to be with you, Father. He's now sitting at your right hand in the place of power and majesty from where he shall come to judge the dead and the living. I believe that today. I confess that today. And I believe that through my truthful repentance, you have saved me. My past is covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that he shed on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. I thank you for saving me today. And believe that. Should I die this day, I will be with you in heaven forever. And I thank you for saving me today. In Jesus' name I pray and thank you. Amen. My beloved, if you said that prayer today and meant it from your heart, I want to be the first to welcome you into the kingdom of God. Now what I want you to do is go to a Bible preaching, teaching church, get an audience with a pastor or one of his elders, tell them what happened, ask them to pray with you, pray for you, anoint you with oil, and to baptize you by full immersion in water in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Ask them to mentor you. Ask them to teach you and to build you up and instruct you in the newfound faith in Jesus Christ. And then what I would like you to do is email me and tell me what happened. The church email address is abundant.grace at att.net. You may also contact me through our website at www.abundantgracechurch.net or through our other website at www. Abundant Grace of Midlothian.com. Remember, my beloved, your salvation today is just the beginning of a new life. Remain steady in the faith, study the Word of God, pray fast, and especially tell others about your newfound faith in Jesus Christ that they may also come to the cross and repent and receive Jesus Christ as their Savior and Lord. You may follow us on social media, all the outlets, the Spreaker, Facebook. Just Google me at Abundant Grace Church of Melothian or Bishop Ramon Di Maria. Thank you for being with us today, my beloved. A message has been now from 2 Corinthians chapter 6, and verse 2. This has been part 2 of a two-part series. And the closing, of course. God bless you. I'm Bishop Ramon Di Maria. I'm the senior pastor of Abundant Grace Church. God bless you and go with God.